Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Cordell Cummings alongside Ben Vahey and today we're going to discuss the Section 5 Finals, Brockport's Championship match versus Alfred, and surprise, the women's volleyball team has a shot at yet another SUNYAC championship. We have that and much more coming up next. A lot has happened this week, so let's get right to it with the Section 5 football games. We start off with Wilson and West Aronacoy Eagles facing off last Friday night in the Section 5 Class A Championships. Aronacoy threatening to score Freddie June with the play action and roll to the right and is being chased down, but he would find Gerald Drumgoole for the touchdown to put the Eagles up 6 to nothing. Wilson's first possession, and they keep it on the ground. Desi Floyd with his best beast mode impression. He won't be denied. Wilson ties the game at six. Wilson with the ball now. After Desi Floyd gets this long touchdown run, celebration with his teammate, he's a very good player. Wilson with the ball now, and you got it. Just hand it off to Desi Floyd and let him go to work. Floyd with the speed, he outruns the defense, and he dives in the end zone for the touchdown. Wilson will lead at the break, 14 to six. Wilson taking firm control of the game now. Floyd's running mate, Duvar Douglas, getting in on the action. With the toss sweep to the left, one cut, and he gone. To seal the deal, the Wildcats defense comes up big. Floyd and Douglas combine for the strip sack, and Floyd takes it to the house for the touchdown. Wilson would cruise to the victory and garner their first Section 5 championship in school history. In the Section 5 AA championship game pitted, the top-seeded Pittsburgh Panthers took on the Aquinas Little Irish. Down six in the second quarter, Pittsburgh running back Chris Cox take the ball to the Aquinas one before scoring on the next play to put his team up 14-13. Following a long completion, Aquinas quarterback John Clock finds wide receiver James Jones wide open in the end zone to put the Little Irish up 20 to 14. As you can see, here's Clock going in right now. This is a perfect touchdown shot by our photographer Ben Gramado. In Aquinas territory, late in the game, the Irish sacks quarterback Matt LaRocca fourth down, ending the Pittsburgh drive. One last chance for the Panthers as they attempt to hook a ladder play at the end of the game and it comes up short as Aquinas recovers the fumble. Look, here goes LaRock going around, but he gets taken down by the Irish, and that's it, game over. Aquinas goes on to win 20 to 14, and they win their 10th sectional championship in 14 years. They play again on Saturday here at Bob Boozer Field against section six champ, Lancaster. We caught up with a couple of Aquinas players after the game. I'm just good guys and my brothers. I've been playing football with them for a long time, so it's kind of happy to spend this moment with some of the people that I've been with in class and everywhere for years. So it's happy. Yeah, well, everyone doubted us this year because we didn't make sectionals last year, so that like gave us an edge and motivated us even more. Aquinas bounced back nicely after a disappointing season, so it'll be interesting to see what they do this year. So now we move on to soccer. The Blackport Blue Devils took on Pittsburgh Sutherland in a match of the winners from Section A1 and A2 last week. With the game tied at zero in the second half, Pittsburgh midfielder John Mazel puts the Panthers up one to nothing early in the second half. On a breakaway, he sneaks it right past the outstretched arms of the goalie. In the 60th minute, Kobe Warham ties the game at one for Brockport after a nice cross from his teammate. Following two scoreless overtimes and seven rounds of penalty kicks, Pittsburgh keeper Alex Ole York makes his fourth save of penalty kicks with the game on the line. For Pittsburgh, the freshman Dylan Pladstrup buries it in in the eighth round of penalty kicks as the Knights move on to the far west region. Brockport head coach Chris Zorn coaching his final game for the Blue Devils. Here's what he had to say following his last game. Didn't do that tonight, and, and uh, you know it kind of hurts walking off the field right now. Uh, uh, on the losing end, so but the guys played a heck of a game. They've had a heck of a season. I appreciate everything that they've done for me uh, throughout the year, and uh, you know I'm just super proud of those guys. So as you can see, a disappointing end to the season for the Brockport soccer team. A historic career for them. What's your take on where the coach heads now and just the team? Well, I gotta say, Cordell. He had a good season this year, getting his team to a Section 5 title. I think that's the best going away present for him because who yeah. expects in your last coaching career to win that? Unfortunately, they won't be going on to states as we just showed. They got taken down by Pittsburgh mm -hmm. Sutherland and penalty kicks. But I think Zorn's got a bright future ahead of him. He can enjoy retirement now, whatever he plans to do. Yeah. And I think Brockport's going to be really sad to miss him next year when they come back in September and he won't be there. Yeah, most definitely. He's coached for over 25 years, 15 years at his most recent on varsity. And... Obviously, he's he's been the stable in that uh, in that soccer program. So 
it's probably sad to see him go, yes. but obviously it's a it's a good retirement for him. He yeah. can do bigger and better things in his future. Absolutely, Cordell. Bigger and better for him, and hopefully he will do a great future. Yeah. Now we move on to the college ranks where the Brockport football team was hoping to clinch the Empire 8 on senior day as they hosted the Alfred Saxons. First quarter, Joe Germanario throws a nice pass to Jerry Thompson who dives into the end zone. Brockport takes the lead 7-0. Second quarter now, Joe Germanario, the quarterback, finds his way into the end zone for the one-yard touchdown. The Golden Eagles go up 14-0. Later in the quarter, Alfred quarterback Bryce Morrison passes it off to Malike Fuentes for the Alfred touchdown. That doesn't really hurt Brockport though as they still lead 14-7. The Saxons would add a field goal later in the quarter to make it 14-10 at halftime. Third quarter now, Morrison tries to give Alfred a scoring chance downfield, but instead he throws an interception to Jake O'Connell, the Spencerport native, who does it again, returning it for a touchdown. Brockport now up 28-0. But hold your breath here in the third quarter, a scary moment. Joe Germanario takes a hit from Alfred's Raekwon gear, and this doesn't look good at all. Germanario is knocked unconscious for a second. As you can see, the referees are calling over the training staff and telling the players to go away, and Germanario would be attended to by trainers and emergency medical technicians. The crowd was silent for a while, but there was hope. As Germanario was being loaded into the ambulance, he gave a thumbs up. That was a relief to see that the crowd gave him a hand as he was being taken away by AMR ambulance to a local hospital. The stylist's Justin Maybach reports that Germanario will not be playing next week on the road versus St. Lawrence. Backup quarterback Jason Helwig will take over the starting duties. The Golden Eagles gave Germanero something to be excited about though on the next play. With Helwig now in the game, Julius Misro takes it all the way back for Brockport and everybody thinks he scored a touchdown, but he stepped out of bounds. No worries though, because on the very next play, Christian Hollister takes it in for the one yard touchdown and that is all the Golden Eagles would need. Brockport takes down the Alfred Saxons 35 to 25 in the final. They are now 9-0 and have clinched the Empire 8 at home and a spot in the playoffs. Well, we knew we knew they were a good running offense. They could pass. Like we knew they were a good team coming in. That was gonna be the hardest team we faced. And since the beginning, we were just like, "Yo, it's gonna be a dog fight till the end." And we never let that get in the way of what we got. First, first drive. I uh, we were talking about it all week. They're playing cover three, so he's a little bit farther off me. I had a hitch, and he just missed the tackle, and I slipped it and went for the touchdown. The Golden Eagles look to close out the regular season with a perfect 10 and 0 record Saturday on the road at St. Lawrence. The women's volleyball team are SUNYAC champions once again. The Golden Eagles defeated Fredonia State in three straight sets on Friday. Brockport took the first set thanks to a pair of kills from Megan Maestro and Lakin Fox. Brockport trailed early in the third set, four to nothing, but they would climb back into the match. The offense gained momentum, evident by a 12 to one run, and taking the honors for the win was Jamie Schlesinger, who closed out the match with a kill to secure the victory, 25 to 16. Noel Polencars and Fox were both named to the all-tournament team, while Ortiz Whittemore was named the tournament MVP. Brockport will now have an automatic bid in the NCAA tournament for the third straight year. They'll be traveling to Otterbound University in Westerville, Ohio, to take on Junianta College, the NCAA Volleyball Championships. The game is scheduled for a 12.30 start. Now we shift over to the ice where the Golden Eagles were hosting Fredonia State in the Suniac opener. There was action right out of the gate. 53 seconds into the game, Dylan Shapiro fires a shot on goal with the assist from Tim Keelich. Brockport up 1-0. Here's Brockport on the power play. Connor Hutchins with the puck on the right wing. Skips it to Zach Zickich for a perfectly executed goal. Moving on to the third period now, Fredonia trying to climb back into this one. Connor Hutchins steals the puck in Fredonia territory and finds a wide open Sikic for his second goal of the night. That pushes the lead to 3-1 to one Brockport and they would eventually go on to win the game 4-1. to one. The wrestling team had a strong touch start to their season after hosting the Brockport Open. The tournament hosted over eight teams, but Brockport failed, fared well with a couple top three finishes. Tristan Engel led the way in 197 weight class by winning all five of his five of his matches. Senior Sean Peacock finished in second place in the 149 division after being injured in his final match. Although he would defeat his first three opponents by technical fall, and freshman Nico Scarino fared well in his debut in the 125 division. Scarino went 4-1 in his matches with his only loss coming from his teammate Jonathan Haas, who went 5-0 on the day. The Golden Eagles will hit the road to Alliance, Ohio for the Mount Union Tournament this Saturday. The campus will be busy this week with high school football games. Here is what is happening in the Far West Regionals this weekend as Section 5 takes on Section 6. 
The first game will be Friday afternoon when Clyde Savannah takes on Maple Grove in the Class C Regional Final. Kickoff is set for 5 p.m. And at 8 o'clock, right after that, Wilson Magnet will face West Seneca West. Wilson is looking for their first Class A Regional title after beating Brockport and upsetting Arondequoit to win their first ever Section 5 title in school history. Then on Saturday, there will be three games. At 1 o'clock in the Class C Regional Final, the Cal Mum Red Raiders take on Cleveland Hill. Cal Mum quarterback A.J. May is playing for much more than a championship. He played in a game just five days after the shocking death of his sister. His teammates supported him and helped him lead the team onto a win over East Rochester Grenada last weekend. In the Class B Regional Final, at 4 o'clock, undefeated Hornell looks to continue their streak as they take on Cheek to Wagga. And the grand finale will be Lancaster versus Aquinas Saturday night at 7. All these games will be played at Bob Boozer Field at the College at Brockport. And many of the teams are on the road playing on a neutral site for playoff action here at Brockport throughout the week. So if you're willing to travel, you can head over to SUNY Potsdam to watch the men's and women's swimming and diving teams show off their skills. The meet will begin at 2 o'clock. And lastly, the top seven men's and cross-country runners will travel to Houghton for the NCAA Regionals. So, with all this being said, Brockport in full swing as they head over to the uh, winter seasons. What is the game to look for for you, in your opinion? I think, Cordell, the game to look forward to is this Friday night in high hockey. Right here is the college takes on SUNY Plattsburgh. Plattsburgh has a real tough team. Them and Oswego are the two biggest rivals for our hockey team. Because mm -hmm. Plattsburgh is so close to the Canadian border, I will not be shocked if they have Canadian players who are so good on their roster. So Plattsburgh is going to be a big challenge, I think, for the Brockport Golden Eagles. But if they play the way they did against Fredonia and, mm -hmm. and Newman, yeah. I think they have a good shot. But, yeah, the hockey so, team is really good. Ours and theirs. But my game to watch will have to be the volleyball team. Mm -hmm. They've been playing really, really good, as evident by their SUNYAC championship again. So I'll have to, and they're traveling on the road. It's nice to see them go to the NCAA uh, championship, uh, championships in uh, Ohio. So I'm looking forward to see what the volleyball team has to show. They have a trip to Ohio, but let's see what they can bring back for us. Yeah, most definitely. Mm -hmm. But that'll do it for this week's Talent Sportscast. If you haven't subscribed already to our YouTube channel, make sure you do so. Also follow us on all other social media pages to get the latest in sports, news, and entertainment. With your weekly sportscast, I'm Cordell Cummings. And I'm Ben Vahey. Thanks for watching.